Are you rushing all the time? Hi, and welcome back to Ask Dr. Syra, the show where I answer your questions about mental health, relationships, and personal growth. Today's question comes from Lali. Lali says, I'm a busy working mom of two. The day-to-day of my life is really hectic. How can I not feel so rushed all the time? I'm a busy working mom of two. The day-to-day of my life is really hectic. How can I not feel so rushed all of the time? Oh, Lolly, I can relate to that question. Um, I remember when I used to be a rusher and a very, very busy person. And it's overwhelming. It's hard to kind of catch your breath, right? It's just hard. It just feels like it's the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And I mean, you're working and you're mom of two. Of course, it's going to feel like a lot. Um, but how do you get rid of that rushed feeling? So I do have some ideas about that that you might want to try. Um, and again, this is not like therapy, but it's just some suggestions and some ideas that that could be perhaps helpful. So the first thing is remembering That when you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And so for busy moms, often we say yes to activities or commitments, which means actually we end up saying no to rest and downtime. Sometimes we think if we don't have a good reason, we can't say no to, you know, an invitation that somebody's given us or a favor that somebody needs from us um, or even things that our kids want to do. We feel like we have to say yes, unless we have something better going on or another commitment, but we actually don't. We can just say no because we're saying yes to rest. We're saying yes to just like sitting around doing nothing at home. So next time you find yourself saying yes to something, remember you're saying no to rest. When you're saying yes to an obligation, a commitment, an activity, even if it's going to be fun, even if it's going to be really engaging, you're sacrificing that time you could just be alone at home doing nothing. Now, it's not to say you should spend your whole life alone at home doing nothing, right? Um, but no, if you're busy, if you're rushed all the time, that may be something to look at is where have I said yes to something out there when really I need to be saying yes to my own downtime? Because I've said no to my own downtime when I said yes to them. So that's the first thing. The second thing I would say is enlist your kids. Now, I don't know how old your kids are. If they're really like, if they're under five, (laughs) they're more work than help at that age. Um, But as they get older, you'll actually be able to enlist your kids in helping with some of the things that that maybe you used to do. Um, I know when my kids hit that age where suddenly they could help, oh my gosh, it was like the clouds parted and the sun shone down. It was like, hallelujah, finally. And they don't love it. They don't love helping me. They don't enjoy chores. But um, I tell myself that I'm enlisting them, not just for my selfish reasons, but also because I'm trying to prepare them to be good human adults. (laughs) So they need to know how to do certain things. They need to know how to do their laundry. They need to know how to clean their rooms. They need to know how to wash dishes and even make meals. Um, And so as much as they grow older, you'll probably be able to take a few things off your plate and actually enlist your children in supporting you um, in, in the household stuff. Now, I don't know if you have a partner in the household as well. If you do have a partner, maybe it's worth looking at how you might enlist your partner um, with some pieces that might be able to be taken off your plate. Some moms I know, many moms I know, tend to think they have to do everything and do everything at a really, really high standard or perfectly. And that's a recipe for disaster, right? Because we can't. I mean, we could. But what what suffers is our own mental health and our own well-being because we're just rushing, rushing, rushing. And I don't know about you, but when I'm rushing, I'm very impatient. Like my, my patience goes way down. My compassion goes way down. My capacity to forgive or um, allow for mistakes goes way down when I'm rushing. And so when you stop rushing, you'll just feel better. You'll be a better person. And one of the ways to do that is to enlist others in your household to support you so that you don't have to do everything. Um, the other 
the other idea that I have is to actually set alarms. This is something that really helped me. So I would, I would actually set alarms so that I would leave earlier than I needed to, um, when I was driving somewhere. And that really helps because when I'm rushing driving, that's stressful, right? Because now every red light, every traffic jam is going to like intensify that feeling of feeling rushed. And so, ah, so if I give myself extra time and I actually learned this from my husband, cause he leaves like way too early all the time to go anywhere. And I used to, he used to just get under my skin, right? Cause I'm like, we'll get there. But I realized that when we're early, it just, my tension just goes way down. If I know we're going to be early. Um, Brahma Kumari actually talks about this, the Shivani, um, and she talks about, you know, the energy with which you arrive to a location, right? When we're rushing and we're kind of late, then we arrive with this like frazzled energy and we're like, ah, it takes us a minute to kind of settle in. When we're on time, we still may have be a bit elevated, right? But when we're early, we know we can get there, we can settle in, we just come in, our energy comes in very differently when we're early for things. So just something as simple as setting an alarm for a little bit less time, you know, so you have a little bit more time to get where you're going. Um, or you're not like scheduling things back to back, and you're giving yourself time in between. A simple one for me as a therapist is I have a significant gap between each of my client sessions. And I used to have a smaller gap, but I found that I was rushing through that gap and then trying to get there for the next client when I've only had like 15 minutes to gather myself. It was too not, it was not enough. And so giving yourself that those um, rest periods, those break periods um, can be really, really helpful in your own sense of time and your capacity. So those are my ideas, um, Lolly. And if they say it gets easier and I'm holding on to that and hoping for that. Um, and then the day might come when your kids aren't even in the house and you have a lot less kind of in the day to day. So, you know, this is, this is also to remember this is a season of life. Um, and it will pass. And in the meantime, you can, you can do the best you can to navigate it, to ride these waves. So as I said, saying, um, yes to rest. And that might mean saying no to some other things. Oh, I have some videos on this um, channel around boundaries and asking for what you need and saying no. So check those out if if you need to practice that. Um, enlisting your kids and others in the household and then setting alarms and leaving earlier. Those are my thoughts of how to help that rushed feeling. You could also meditate, um, but I'll talk about that in another video. All right. I hope that was helpful. Pass this on to anyone in your life who's rushed. And if you have a question, send one in. The email address is at the end of the video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.